Hello, my name is Justin Bright, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program version 1.7.3, uh, where we're doing our next small step RP1 career playthrough, where I am now using a brand new set of editing tools, so hopefully this looks and sounds a lot better. Alright, so we are back having finished the research for post-war rocketry testing, and I've grabbed uh, the one part that is in that node is the XLR11, which is something that we'll be using with space plane stuff a little bit later on. Uh, it's the foundation of the X1 um, space plane that we'll use to break the sound barrier, but that's something for once we get our next node finished. Um, until then, uh, we have a uh, upgrade to our Aero B rocket, and the way that that works is you'll see a little upgrade node in the uh, R&D lab, but it doesn't actually do anything. What you actually have to do is go down here into the engine itself, click on the engine GUI, and you'll notice that this is our current config, the WAC Corporal, and then this option has opened up, the Zasser 1. Uh, it just costs us a thousand funds, and we can kind of compare. Uh, looks like it has almost double the thrust, which is fabulous. It weighs a little bit more, but not so much more that uh, it, the thrust doesn't make up for it. Uh, the ISP is a little bit better, and otherwise it is um, identical as far as being uh, dealing with ullage, being pressure fed, and having only one ignition. But it has double the thrust, and also something to keep in mind is that the rate of burn time on the WAC Corporal version of this engine is 47 seconds, but we go ahead and buy the Zasser 1 for 1,000 funds, and that, that is an immediate cost that is then forever. Now it just costs us 10 extra bucks every time we want to use this engine, and uh, the you'll notice that the uh, rated burn time has gone down from 47 to 40 seconds, but it thrusts a little bit harder, so that makes it a little bit I don't know, does it make it easier to control, harder to control? I'm going to go with easier. Um, so anyways, yeah, so that's that's kind of how that upgrade process works, which is a very cool thing, and you'll, you'll learn to love this. And this is going to give us, with the additional thrust, a whole lot more capability out of this rocket than just meets the eye from the small-looking... Uh, differences that you see here. And the other thing to keep in mind is that it's the same physical part, like it's still an B engine, and so it retains the testing that we've done. So you'll notice that after all of the rockets that we've launched, the three or four of these uh, engines that we fired, um, we now have uh, 1,484.9 DUs, which is the measurement of data that uh, is um, gathered by testing flights through the test light mod. Uh, and that reduces the failure rate on a full burn, which is the measurement of how often this is expected to fail over the course of ever, and uh, over the course of one rocket's lifetime, and then the ignition failure rate, how much it fails when I hit the space bar. 4.89% right now, and then mean time between failures is 352.3 seconds, which is dramatically longer than the rated burn time, which means that this is getting to be a fairly reliable rocket. 7% and 5% are not great, but there's a fair chance we'll never have one fail, and there's a fair chance that the very next rocket we fire is going to fail, so such as it is. But let's see what uh, we can now do for our design now that we have this rocket, the Zasser 1 rocket, unlocked. So that gives us, uh, now you'll see that our 48.3 seconds with this amount of fuel up to just 17, which means we can pack a bunch more fuel. So let's do that. Let's make this a little bit of a longer rocket. There we go. And we'll bring it down to, we'll call it 41.2 seconds. Fabulous. And then that is, that is kind of that. So let's go ahead and call this one. All right, so the rocket that this was based on uh, now that it has been upgraded to the Zasser 1 engine, that makes it a little bit closer to the RTV, the Aero B RTV N 8 ro uh, sounding rocket. And so this Aero B rocket was used uh, basically in the same way as an evolution of the WAC Corporal rocket that we used previously. So uh, it has a lot of the same characteristics, a lot of the same launch tower uh, business. Uh, the only real difference right now is that the actual eight, uh, Aero B uh, RTV N-8 uh, used a different solid rocket booster that we are not going to unlock until 
the uh, early solid rocket engines node. So that's going to be something that we're going to be dealing with a lot here in the beginning is that I'm going to get like half of a new rocket and then I'm just going to start using it right away because why wouldn't you? Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the important bit. Uh, the, the solid rocket booster that is used on the bottom of this, of the actual version of this rocket, is dramatically more capable and will increase our abilities, but this is already going to give us a pretty big boost. So we're just going to call this the Aero B RTV N1? Sure, why not? Um, and that's just going to be what uh, what we start with on this. And you'll see that the imp the improvement is already pretty dramatic. So we're at 1399 meters per second uh, delta V compared to the WAC Corporal, which had more than that. And the reason it had more than that is because I forgot that the fuel mix changes slightly. There we go. <laughs> Now there's all kinds of extra fuel. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of little things that you've got to kind of keep in mind as you're rebuilding rockets. Uh, it's best to kind of take it slow, think about what you're doing. Um, it's I, I hate rebuilding rockets from scratch because I find uh, the B9 uh, procedural wing uh, menu to be kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so I try to retool existing stages as opposed to um, building things from scratch every time. But yeah, so it's just something that you got to keep in mind. So we do need to drop this down to 40 seconds. So there we go. We are going to, let's go a little bit more than that. 43.1. I like that a lot uh, for a um, compared to our rated bird time of 40 seconds. I think 3.1 seconds is worth uh, risking. Uh, so, once again, let's try again on the comparison. So we are looking at 2,320 meters per second of delta V compared to 2,303 meters per second of delta V. And this uh, includes a parachute and a biological sample return so this is not just like a bare metal rocket this actually has some scientific capabilities on every launch that we can increase if we so choose by another 300 meters per second if we really need to squeeze out the last bit of altitude so that's the other design factor that you really need to keep in mind in um in realism overhaul in general and rp1 in particular uh Every kilogram counts by like a lot. It's incredibly important to minimize your weight. Um, in regular Kerbal Space Program, you can just add more boosters and everything will work out somehow. Uh, but that's not really the case in Realism Overhaul. You really want to do everything you can to minimize the amount of payload that you're launching um, and the extra stuff that is attached to it to uh, make your payloads really efficient and that is how you get good stuff moving into orbit so there we go let's go ahead and save that and we are going to do our tooling now because we have a new tank size to tool and that's just going to cost us 242 because we have already tooled something very very similar um i'm pretty sure that's the case the first time you tool something like this it was much more expensive so we go ahead and do that, and that is going to shave off some time, and this ends up being not even much more expensive. So that's a 203. Um, it's 203 to launch this. This one was 83, so okay. So that is a pretty dramatic increase, but it's also a pretty good uh, platform. So yeah, comparing apples to apples, it's about 83 funds to launch the other, uh, the Tim... Uh, the WAC Corporal version of this with no science experiments and it costs 95 to uh, launch this new uh, Aero, Aerobe RTV version of the rocket without all the science experiments. Um, we'll, we'll be getting some of these back so hopefully that will defray the cost a little bit but yeah so it's a large expenditure up front that leads us to uh, only a tiny amount of increase in price every time thereafter so it very much encourages you to um, find something that works and stick with it. And so let's go ahead and give that a test. I'm fairly confident that this will work off the pad, so I'm not going to go ahead and do a simulation on this one, but uh, I think it is worth going ahead and firing one of these off. And so we're going to go ahead and add that to the list to uh, give that a shot, and that'll be done in about 70 days. Fabulous. Uh, and we'll be able to grab, um, I think... 
It should be very, very close, but we might be able to get above 140 kilometers to get, uh, get a um, space uh, return and uh, for our biological sample capsule. I'm not sure that that will work. I may have to uh, like extend this tank just a little bit and go into the danger zone a little bit more, but that can be part of our testing process, so I will, I will be trying that out. Ah, yes, so this is uh, the thing that unlocks after you have been to uh, a suborbital trajectory and returned. You unlock these two contracts here, which is low space biological experimentation and low space film return. And both of them are going to require very different rockets. And hopefully uh, we're going to find out. Um, oh, actually, look at that. This is slightly different. All right. So... Uh, this contract, sorry, let me start from the top here. Uh, this contract, Low Space Biological Experimentation, is something that you can do with a small sounding rocket. So our Aero B is going to be what we use for this uh, because they want us to get to 35, or I'm sorry, they want us to get to 100 kilometers with a um, biological experiment, which we already have packed on there, and a sounding payload, which we don't have packed on there. So we're going to have to make an edit to that. Um, and this is a progressive set of contracts there's three of them and they get a little bit harder each time which means i'm going to have to uh, make my rocket a little bit more capable each time but it's my understanding based on like the gameplay of this that this is going to take us through all of that research that i have to get done uh and give us money and give us stuff and give us things to do while we are getting that research done and also giving us the funds to increase our R&D speed, which is fantastic. The other contract that is kind of a partner to that one is uh, this low space film return. So this is launch a rocket with an early film camera above 100 kilometers and cover a downrange distance of 200 kilometers. So there it is again, once again, really good gameplay design that they are trying to start nudging me towards this downrange milestone. Um, and that's something that we definitely want to start pushing towards. But let's go ahead and grab this one because we can only do one of these at a time. There's no uh, Kerbal, uh, early Kerbal Space Program career style of grabbing every contract that you can do that with the same rocket and do them all at once. Unfortunately, that's just not possible uh, in RP-1. Uh, at least with these particular contracts. I'm sure there's some things you can double up. But anyways, uh, you can't do both of them at the same time, but you might not even want to do them at the same time because, uh, as I mentioned before, keeping your weight down is very, very important. And this gets us up to 2,320 meters, which will definitely give us above 100 and maybe over 140, but I'm not 100% certain. Uh, but this is the film camera. Look at this chonker. So that's 1.25 meters. That's the same size as the KSP material bay. Um, and there's no way we are getting this launched on an aerobee. Let's just see. Yeah, that gets us down to uh, pretty, it kills about 600 meters per second of our delta V and is not aerodynamic at all and so making a 1.25 meter version of this rocket will be massively overweight and not very performant at all so that would be a terrible idea so that means that this must be pushing us uh, in a different direction so if um, the contract for biological sample return looks exactly almost exactly like this then the rocket that can take a early film camera has got to look something like this where it's one meter is this one meter yeah 1.25 meters um and that's going to be using the big and lovely rd100 and so yes yes i know i am going to do the sacrilegious thing and mix russian and american rocketry but i don't actually care because uh the a4 uh is functionally identical to the rd100 at this early stage of the game however uh the next upgrade of the a4 is to the a9 which is according to the game's documentation not something that was ever put into use where and it's incredibly expensive um, of an upgrade whereas the rd series has a bunch of small incremental upgrades that were used on the um 
Russian IRBMs, intermediate range ballistic missiles. Uh, and there's lots of small, affordable, incremental upgrades that will increase our performance over time with that. So that is the path that we are going to go. We are gonna build a rocket with these parts. But first, I want to make sure that I don't forget to uh, go into the AeroB, and we can actually just scrap it uh, and reload that, there we go. Uh, because, remember, uh, this contract calls for 35 units of uh, sounding payload, which is something that I struggled with for longer than I care to admit. Uh, but what I'm, we're gonna do is, instead of just this nose cone that we've been using, I'm gonna slap on another procedural tank. We are going to make it look uh, very similar to the cone that we had before, so that means we need to get down to 380 millimeters. There we go. Uh, that's a little pointier than I was hoping for. There we go, nice and round. And let's get this up to say 1.5 meters, because actually, hold on, does this? One, two, five, three, no. Tooled. Oh, look at that. So, yeah, so this size tank is within 4% of another tank that I already have tooled, and so it is also tooled. So I can just do it like this, and we'll open up the uh, UI. And uh, if you switch to high pressure tank, uh, regular procedural tank, um, then you can see sounding payload. You cannot see it if it is not a high pressure tank, it just will not show up at all. Um, so that's something that tripped me up a lot early on. Uh, you can also get those on uh, service module tanks, but we don't need to use service module tanks, which are even worse than these high pressure tanks. So we go ahead and grab that and we need 35 and look like we actually have a little bit too much. Fantastic. So we can get down to 41. Actually, let's just do this right here. Three, five, update. And there we go, that makes that a little bit smaller, leaves a little bit of empty space. This is already tooled, and so this will act as our um, nose cone with a little bit of extra extra payload to make that. Uh, however, I think this is not, this is definitely not gonna get to 140 kilometers at uh, the 150 meter per second uh, delta V reduction that we took by adding that extra weight. So that is, let's see. Sounding payload, zero grams. I'm not actually sure. Okay, I'm not 100% sure exactly how much that weighs. I mean, I guess we can, by process of elimination, it's 0 0.951 now, we remove that. It's just 0 0.2 tons, just a tiny amount, but that is enough to have a fairly large impact, especially on the tank type, the, the nose cone size, um, everything, Every tiny little bit, every kilogram uh, causes us to lose efficiency, lose delta V, and is something that we have to balance very carefully. Um, so I don't think this is gonna make 140 kilometers, but I do think it's going to hit 100. So I am going to, uh, I feel pretty good about that. So we are going to make sure our tooling is right and that, that is correct from here. Uh, we are going to save this and go ahead and put that on the queue. All right, so here is what I've come up with as my take on the uh, scientific R1 missile, which, uh, as I mentioned before, is a Russian intermediate-range ballistic missile that was iterated on a whole bunch but used these RD100 series engines that we're going to be using. And uh, to start with, I want to just mention that we're not even starting at the very basics because uh, the RD100 is unlocked in the starting science node and uh, the science node that we just unlocked gets us the RD101, which uh, cost me 5,000 funds. Uh, if I wanted to instead use the... Um, a4 rocket. Uh, the very basic version, the A4 version, is just the same, um, pretty much the same uh, functionally, but the upgrade is 35,000 35, funds instead of 5,000 funds. So yeah, we're not going to be using that one. Um, that seems like it's only useful for historical reenactments, not actually for gameplay, if we're only concerned about that. And you can see we have a whole bunch of 
uh, upgrades uh, coming our way that are in the next nodes like each one is in the next node so we have one more uh, rocket node to get the early rocketry to the rd102 which is a little bit better than the rd103 which is a little better etc etc so that is what we're going to be using so this is an ethanol uh, liquid oxygen htp rocket um, just the same as the a4 and is based on the v2 uh, rocket and they are going to be uh, i think not requiring high high pressure uh, a high pressure tank but you'll see we'll just kind of work from the top um, we have a parachute this is the this is actually the first real chute parachute that we're going to be dealing with and so this is something that's really important to look at if these parachutes are really big and expensive for you then you need to look at the action menu and then that opens up the real chute parachute editor where i have done a couple things to this one um, i've made it a single chute uh, i've made it silk which is cheaper and a little bit worse uh, in performance than the nylon then it starts off as default I've eliminated all of the spare parachutes um, because we just are not going to need to pack extra parachutes. And I also recalculated the mass that it wants to use um, with only the craft that you are dropping. So to go into that a little bit further, um, Real Shoot tries to calculate a wanted touchdown speed and how many parachutes you're going to use um, based on the current mass of your vessel, and it'll use the dry mass of the vessel, um, which means it uses the mass after the fuel is gone, which, you know, that's great. But we're not landing this whole booster. We're landing just this top bit. So I basically just removed everything else. I just set it off to one side, recalculated it, and it dramatically decreased the size of the parachute that it was going to be needed, which brought it down from like 600 fund... Uh, 600 fun parachute down to a 24 fun parachute which is just lovely and i left this as as it was because that doesn't uh, bother me at all uh yeah so then we have this itty bitty sliver of a procedural avionics core because i wanted one that actually fit what i was trying to do um, because we're basically using i want to use a like sounding rocket telemetry unit which is what this is. I have this configured as a science core, which is just telemetry, no control whatsoever. It can control zero tons of mass. Um, and so that is how that is set up. Uh, based on the procedural size that you make it, uh, you have a certain avionics utilization based on how big your rocket is that is trying to control and what it is trying to do and what technology level you are, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but at the absolute basics, it doesn't take much space. And then I filled the rest of, spa rest of the space with a ton of electric charge, which, um, yeah, that, that will be handy to have that packed in there as well. Then obviously we've got the film camera and then the decoupler, which is going to uh, break this part off after we have reached our uh, altitude. Then we just have a two tank setup of a little slopey bit there and then the big tank that heads down. And then we have some wings that are, or wings, well, they're B9 procedural wings that are in a weird spot, but we are planning on moving those to make this look a little bit more like the, uh, the actual rocket that this is. So we'll bring that down and then we'll tuck that in so that it just touches inside here. And there we go. So now we have uh, this just kind of set up there so that actually looks like a, um, it looks like a neat little boat tail with like the sloped, uh, the sloped boat tail with the fin sticking out of it. But um, yeah, what this is, is actually a set of, uh, it's a procedural boat tail ad adapter with the conic fairing slapped on the side. That's going to increase the cost, but I think that's going to uh, decrease some of the aerodynamic drag. It's going to let us have a nice visual place for these uh, fins to stick on, and it looks really a lot cooler. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stick with that. Uh, so we're going to want to stick on top of here a launch stability enhancer. Um, these launch clamps, uh, importantly, have fuel pumps. So when this is appearance squad, ooh, it's all shiny. I like it. I like it being shiny. Uh, so yeah, this is a fuel pump on there, and that means that. Um, well, I'll show you when we launch this, but. Um, 
the TLDR is that these do not get up to 100% thrust right away, and so we're going to want to sit on the pad and fire the rocket for a while before we release it. And I'll show you what that looks like when we actually launch this guy, but that'll be a little bit a little bit of time from now. Uh, so yeah, you need to have a launch clamp that has a fuel pump uh, so that it can keep the fuel tank topped off so you get the level of performance that we actually uh, want. Okay, so now that this is all set up, let's actually go ahead and fill up these tanks. Uh, we've got this tank here and this tank. Yep, those tanks were all set up, but now we just need to fix up our staging. So we're gonna wanna put the engine down here, down below. Okay, so we need to check once again that we're meeting our rated burn time because I did add a bit of a slope there. I added a procedural tank here to kind of give it a little bit of slope so that changes how much fuel we need. So we need 85 seconds, which is a little bit less than we have. So let's go ahead and shrink this down by a bit. That gets us to a little bit too long. There we go. 7.2 meters gets us um, 88 seconds, 88 and a half seconds, which I think is just the right level of daring. Uh, so we're gonna want to fire the rocket, then release the launch clamp. Uh, that's gonna disappear later on. We're gonna want the parachute up at the top. Ba doop doop, and there we go. Actually we can, yeah, we can just leave all that together because we'll be arming this parachute as soon as we release this because uh, hopefully it'll be a little bit downrange. Uh, yeah, so there we go. That is going to be our, we'll call this the R2, I think is where we are in the progression of RD 100, 101, 102, etc. Maybe. Not 100% sure, but I like R2. That sounds, that sounds nice. So we're going to start with that one. Save that. One thing to keep in mind is that uh, we need this to go down range. So we can't just fire this straight up. That's not, that's not going to be great. That's not going to be helpful for us at all. Um, so we could send this straight up and get like clear a huge amount of space because this goes almost 4,000 meters per second of delta V, but that's not helpful if we go straight up. We need to go down range. So we are gonna tilt this to the side just a touch. And the way I'm gonna do that is I can just rotate it like this. If you hold on the shift key, then you can just rotate just a touch, just a little bit. And this is gonna be something that we iterate on because I have not perfected this at all. Uh, the other thing that we want to uh, rotate is uh, the fins just slightly. We want to rotate these. Oops, not the, there we go, just these. Um, and the way that we want to do this is we want to just get in here and just, just a tiny bit of, um, uh, of torque on this. And what that's going to do is when this launches, it's going to spin the rocket. And that is going to be our spin stabilization. Uh, and hopefully that is going to keep it so that it does not pitch over too far or go flying off in a weird direction. That should, in theory, be what we need to uh, make this rocket pitch over a little bit as a gravity turn and then stay going in that direction. So there we go. That is our R2 rocket. Uh, I'm going to put this in a different stage, make sure that's all set up. Always check your staging in the words of Scott Manley. There we go, so that should work. Uh, the only problem with this lovely, lovely rocket that I've put together is that the tooling is gonna cost me 20,000 funds. So, we're not gonna be able to get this set up yet, but hopefully when I launch my next rocket, we will be able to. All right, so here we are on the pad with the Aerobe RTV N1, which is a fictional rocket that I've just made up for myself. Or maybe it's not a fictional rocket, but it is something that I am making up. 3, 2, 1, launch. And there we go. So now we are on our way skyward. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so... Uh, like I said, we are working on a particular set of contracts for returning these biological uh, science capsules. So I am hoping that this is going to get up above 100 kilometers. Uh, and then we are going to see, once I've done that, how much further it goes. And that is going to inform the... Uh, um, 
what do you call it? That's going to inform our behavior going forward and how we are going to be building uh, further iterations of this rocket. Uh, and you saw that the heat was getting a little bit much for these early wings that I'm using, uh, which is not great. That's something that's actually going to be pretty dangerous uh, as we start getting to be get better and better launch vehicles. We're going to have to be very mindful of um, the sound barrier and uh, heat and pressure and that sort of thing. So we're going to want to upgrade components as we go. So that material science is incredibly important. And as you may have noticed, uh, we have done it, at least uh, for this, the terms of this particular contract. Uh, this got to 123 kilometers with 35 uh, units of sounding payload. Um, so the successive contracts are going to require us to do more and more and have more and more sounding payload and also to get higher. So we may not be able to do this mission again with this exact rocket. We may need to do like that Tim Whack Whack sort of thing where we stack another one on top and see if we can't uh, do it with that. So that should give us plenty of capability, but we will see uh, what that what what is required of us as we go forward and then just kind of keep iterating on that and then once we're going to be able to do that and we're also going to be doing our film canister r2 missile tests all right so that is where we are so i think let's go ahead and look at the contract itself uh, we have reached 100 kilometers with a biological sample and 35 units of payload then now we just need to recover the sample uh, so unfortunately, we are not going to get anything, uh, any science that is worth anything. Uh, but we can just decouple and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the way down. All right, so that came down with no real issues and boop and boop. There we go. We have landed safely and successfully and completed the low space biological experiment at Mentation contract for 19,000 funds, which should fund our ability to uh, tool and then launch our new R2 rockets. But that is actually going to do it for us today. Spent a whole bunch of time in the VAB, but that can be a lot of fun too. Uh, so yeah, leave any feedback in the comments below. Hope you all like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.